Hello everyone and thank you for attending today's presentation. I'd like to start the presentation by introducing the topic. Today we are going to cover the conversion from various uh, software analysis such as SKM and EasyPower into ETAP. To begin this presentation, I would like to go over an overview on why convert and the main reason why we should think about converting is a project is because ETAP provides higher value. ETAP provides higher value because it is a nuclear high impact software that is used across most of the nuclear facilities across North America. ETAP is backed by Quality Assurance, a Q&A program that it has multiple audits per year. It has validated libraries that are nuclear certified, which means all of the cables and all of the protective devices inside the library have been validated and are backed by this quality assurance program. ETAP is also better because it is a proven it's a proven industry leadership. It globally has more than over 50,000 licenses. It is trusted by over 5,000 companies in industrial process, power and energy, as well as government sectors and also 100% of the top electrical designs firms rely on ETAP. ETAP also has a global presence and stability which means local support in a local language. You also add value to your model by adding real-time capability in the future. So your model, your design model doesn't have to go put away in a drawer somewhere until the next expansion or until the next study needs to be performed. You can in fact bring your ETAP model to life by connecting it to your existing SCADA or DCS system. ETAP real time has the ability of creating smart HMI screens whether it's for operators or for analysis purposes. ETAP also has better scenario and project management tools. We have 3D three-dimensional database which allows you to perform various operating conditions on your system without having the limitation that other software has. You have automatic conversion from legacy software. So this is what we're going to cover next. The automatic conversion from legacy software can very easily be used from ETAP 14. There is no need for an additional module. As soon as you convert into ETAP 14, as soon as you install ETAP 14 on your computer, this is part of your baseline. So what I like to do is I like to start by creating a new project and I'm going to call this project uh, Data Exchange. This is going to be a brand new blank project. So as you can see there are no elements on this project. And to begin the import process, the automated import process, simply go over to the file pull down menu, select data exchange. You could see here the various uh, import formats that are supported. Uh, one of them being the raw format, which a lot of PSSC files can be saved to. Another one is the SKM version 6, 6.5 or 7. Another uh, data format that could be imported is 
the ability to import EC Power projects in version 8 or 9. Uh, for this exercise, for this example, I will select a Power Tools SKM project. And the first thing we need to select when performing this conversion is an ETAP library file. So whether it is uh, your ETAP 14 library or whether it is a master library that you may be using, that's the first step to, to do in the conversion. So I'll go ahead and select the ETAB library uh, 14, which this is the, the default library that gets installed when you install ETAB 14. And this right here is the data exchange interface. So this will be very similar for EC Power or other uh, data uh, conversion that you need to perform. The first thing I'm going to do is I will select the SKM project here on my computer. It has an extension PRJ. Once the file is successfully selected, you could see that all of the one-line diagrams that are part of this project will be displayed. This particular uh, model contains a total of four one-line diagrams. However, when I click on select, you could see by the size of these drawing files, one-line diagram files, that the overall DRW file contains the most, most of the data. So I'll go ahead and open this file by itself because I know the other smaller files are just uh, TCC uh, previews. And then I'm going to select the following two options. I have an option here called Convert Capture TCC into Star. So with this option, by checking this option, what you'll do is the conversion allows you to import any TCCs that have been created with the other analysis software. I'll also uh, put a check option where it says place each drawing into a composite network. For those models that perhaps uh, are um, broken into more than one one-line diagram, you can specify this option. So uh, each one-line diagram gets imported into a composite network. The next step you want to do is import or map all the protected device settings into an ETAP equivalent library. So when I click on LIB map, the library map interface is automatically called and the first thing you'll see is a log file. This is a text file that lets you know which elements have been fully mapped, which elements have been partially mapped, which means I need to go in and just double check, make sure the settings are correct, and which elements are not mapped. So in this case, um, I have one circuit breaker that has been partially mapped. Everything else is, is fully mapped. So I need to just go into each one of these elements that are partially mapped and verify that the settings are in fact correct. So I'll go ahead and close this log file. And the way the protected device mapping works is the utility will read the existing settings on your project. The project is uh, typically property of the, uh, the consultant or is property of the um, end user who created the model originally. ETAB utility reads this, uh, this file. It gathers all the manufactured data for the protected devices, the models, as well as all the settings, like pickup setting, delay settings, instantaneous settings. So all of this information is shown on the top portion, the top half. In this case, we're reading the fuse information for this project. This project contains one, two, three fuses. Uh, they all happen to be SNC. So you have a column for manufacturer. You also have a column for type. And you have other columns that tell you the interrupting rating, um, the cartridge um, uh, type, uh, the maximum uh, KV. So all of this information is populated on top. And then on the bottom half, you have the equivalent ETAB data uh, that has been automatically mapped for you. So in this case, uh, all three fuses 
uh, the utility automatically found an equivalent for, for them and it mapped them over for us. If we walk, walk over to the next tab called LVCB, this is where all your low voltage circuit breakers, whether it's power uh, circuit breaker for your mains, uh, thermal magnetic uh, breakers on your loads, insulated molded case breakers, all of these devices will be listed under this tab and the equivalent will automatically be selected for us on the bottom half. Moving over to the next tab is all the relay, all the overcurrent relays. These are relays that carry functions uh, 49, 50, 51. All of these elements are displayed. The original settings are displayed on the top half and the equivalent or the mapped devices are displayed on the bottom half. So after the, these, have, uh, these settings have been uh, verified, after you've gone over your log file and made sure that all of these settings are equivalent, then you just simply select Save and click OK. This will import all of the one-line diagram layout information. So as you could see, the original one-line layout is preserved. Uh, additionally, also all of the uh, motor information, uh, load information, panel information, all of the um, capacitor banks information, impedance on your transformer. So if I open this induction machine here, induction motor, you could see that the, the ID the, or the element name has been preserved. The connection information has been preserved. The nameplate, such as the rated size, number of poles, power factor, efficiency, rated voltage, everything is preserved. Uh, in the same manner, if I double click on any of my protective devices, such as this fuse here, and I go over to the rating page, you could see how ETAP has automatically selected the equivalent fuse from the ETAP library. Okay. Um, one of the first things you want to do when uh, you perform a, a conversion, an import with this utility, is you want to run a load flow analysis. So I'll go over from edit mode to load flow analysis and I'll quickly run my load flow calculations here. I'm going to call this report load flow report click OK here we go here's my load flow report and I'm going to enable my units here as you can see I can see I have my power flow being displayed over the one line diagram And what I like to do for some of you who may be used to per perhaps displaying all of this information as a data block, you have that ability also, starting with ETAB 14, there is a toolbar that you could see here across the, across the top. It's right here. This is the data block toolbar. This utility actually allows you to specify or display data blocks for all of this element type. So I like to display a data block, for example, here for my bus, and I want to display my load flow information. So as you can see here, now I'm displaying my power flow, the power flow that I just run. I'm displaying that data here as part of my one line diagram results. If you wanted to uh, hide any of these data blocks, there is a close button on the top right. Right, you could hide the any one uh, any data blocks if you want to bring back that data block. Simply right click on the element or location. Uh, uh, just uh, go over to data block option and select show. So there's a couple of ways that you could globally either hide your data blocks, turn your data blocks back on specify the type of report you want to display 
this case I'm displaying load flow uh, analysis. You could also display uh, protected by settings. You could also display arc flash. Uh, you could make your own data block by opening your data block editor. This utility here allows you to combine different types of data to report, such as load flow, short circuit analysis, arc flash, protected by settings, just like you do with other analysis software. So this is a brand new um, this, is a, this is a brand new uh, feature in ETAP 14 data blocks. Um, if I d uh, hide my data blocks here for a second, uh, one of the other simulations you may want to perform is a short circuit analysis. So I go over to my short circuit analysis mode just to make sure all my impedance information from the generator, um, transformer, protected device. Uh, settings, my interrupting rating, max KV, making sure all of that has been brought over. I select this uh, location. I'm going to select fault. So now this is going to be part of my short circuit report. And I go ahead and perform an ANSI three-phase device duty evaluation. So I'm going to call this short circuit ANSI report. Select OK. As you can see here, I got my different contributions uh, from my sources. For my utility, my generator, I get my total uh, bolted fault here at this uh, bus location. So all, which means that all of my impedance information for this one-line diagram for this model has been imported. Uh, the one thing that uh, I have experienced is that many times during the import of a model, there may be times where you need to uh, fix the alignment, right? A lot of times, even the original layout is not perfect. Uh, perhaps you had a uh, you had a junior engineer that was not very familiar with the software. They didn't align the model properly. So in ETAP 14, there is a toolbar called Auto Build that I'm going to bring out right here. Let me put back data blocks. And to enable the auto, auto build toolbar, I just simply click on enable one line auto build and I select my default rulebook. The rulebook is very important. It is preloaded when you install ETAP 14 and it is basically a set of rules that is going to help me with my vertical and horizontal alignment. So if I wanted to, for example, fix this branch right here, uh, starting from this transformer feeding these uh, panel loads, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my two winding transformer and I'm going to select downstream alignment. As you could see, the horizontal and vertical is automatically selected or aligned for me. In a similar manner, if I want to fix or align this branch over to the left, I just simply go into the topmost element like this cable I click on fix downstream alignment and it's done for us. Uh, most importantly, uh, what if the model that you are importing has absolutely terrible alignment? We can go all the way up to our utility element. Okay, here it is the uh, utility element. Click on fix downstream alignment and the entire one line diagram is now fixed. Uh, alignment based on the ETAB 14 rulebook. The other item that I want to cover is the TCCs. So for those uh, projects you may have that have already TCCs created, there's a very easy, it's very, it makes it, ETAB uh, 14 makes it very easy for you to get all of those TCCs. So in this particular uh, project that we imported, if I go over to my multi-dimensional database to the left here and I expand my star TCC folder, you could see that we have one, two, and three TCCs that were created originally. So I'm going to open the first TCC called Motor 1. So I double click on it and you could see here the preview of that section of the model. So there's my TCC, which is of the motor that's on the bottom left corner. And you could see the motor acceleration and all of the fuse and other protective devices and damage curves, such as a transformer damage curve, 
is automatically mapped over to this ETAP model. In the same way, there is another feeder C, TCC here. If I double click on that, right, ETAP automatically imports that TCC. So there's no longer uh, any time uh, that you that that is uh, that is wasted uh, trying to import or manually convert a model, right? This utility makes it very very easy uh, for any engineer to quickly take a, um, a legacy uh, software model and import it into ETAP 14. Okay, let me go ahead and save this uh, file. Uh, one of the other items I want to uh, cover is the um, just an overview here to 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 uh, to allow everyone to see the the features that are part of this uh, conversion. Uh, so as you can see, there is a basic column and a comprehensive column. The basic column allows you to import all of the load flow and short circuit information. It, uh, com it, it contains intelligent error checking. Uh, it also includes the uh, automatic one-line diagram generation. So for those projects that maybe all the data and connection information is present, but there's no one-line diagram uh, that was generated, ETAP will automatically, ETAP 14 will automatically uh, generate the one-line diagram and if you perform the auto build, it will automatically set the, the horizontal and vertical alignment for you. So it'll create a one-line diagram in a very uh, intelligent manner. Also, the preservation of the model. So, for example, if you already have an original layout uh, of your one-line diagram, that will be preserved. Um, also, if you have protected device settings, ETAB will automatically map right any existing protected device settings uh, as well as any TCCs that have been created. Okay, um, this basic conversion is part of ETAP 14, so there is no additional cost to our ETAP 14 users. When you install or upgrade to ETAP 14, you will automatically see that this is already covered as part of your baseline. Uh, every user, every ETAP user that currently has a um, active or valid software maintenance uh, has received this upgrade. Uh, if you are not sure whether this uh, uh, upgrade or the DVD, the installation DVD, uh, has been downloaded by your IT department, uh, please contact your IT and request that they download ETAP 14, they install it for you. Uh, you can also contact us at sales at etap.com uh, if you would like to bring your existing license to um, um, valid maintenance. On the column over to the right hand side you have a comprehensive option also that, uh, that a database verification and validation is performed by our engineering services staff. So the data exchange uh, team within ETAB will actually also perform a conversion for you and on top of that it'll perform a database verification and validation of your load flow and short circuit results. There is a cost that is associated with that and it just depends on the number of protected devices that need to be mapped and also the number of buses on your system. So if you feel more comfortable letting the ETAP uh, data exchange and engineering services group uh, perform this conversion for you you can always contact us and uh, we can help you with your validation of the model. So please contact us at datax at etap.com if you have any follow-up questions and we will stay for an additional 15 minutes answering questions and answers if you have any additional questions. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.